All right, my name is Nikolai, and I will be representing uh, the Danish biosensor team, Detectors. So, what we have been doing is that, um, as you can see here, this is our sensor, and I have here four pictures where you can see um, this is uh, an undiced wafer with our nano wires, and we zoom in gradually. You can see and get an idea of how small they are. We go from a chip to five wires on our sensor to the singular nanowire here, which is two microns in width. It is um, a silicon nanowire, as you can see here, and um, we attach antibodies to the singular nanowire, enable us, enabling us to detect specific biomarkers. So, how does it work? It is a junctionless transistor. Um, it can be compared to a pipe where the source and the drain, this is where the water or the current flow flows through, and the antibodies are the ones dialing this um, gate, you know? So, regulating how much of the current can go through the wire. Um, we surface functionalize our wires with the uh, aptes, and we do it by removing the oxygen atoms of the silicon uh, oxide, it enables us to place the silicon atom in Aptis down into the silicon crystal. Um, it has amino groups, and we can attach antibodies to the amino groups. Uh, and using a, um, an, an antibody uh, to um, detect a specific biomarker. These can be exchanged for an other antibodies to make a specific binding of a specific biomarker. Um, so how does it work? So we have here um, a biomarker coming down into the antibody. It changes the current uh, characteristic or current conducting characteristics of the nanowire. And, um, and in, the, in the case we have a negatively charged biomarker, the resistivity will decrease and we have more current going through the wire. This change is instant. This is a real measurement where you can see that after we apply antiprobian P, we get an instant spike, um, which means that the, in, the current going through the wire is instantly increased. We have been able to measure 300 picograms per milliliter uh, of antiprobian P, which is in the safe zone for a middle-aged person. Um, we have had a change in the current of uh, 16 nanoamperes, and our sample volume is 20 microliters, which is essentially a drop of a uh, sample. The scalability of this type of sensor is huge. It is as if it's made for mass production. There are 89 uh, nano uh, chips on each wafer, and you can, ma you can make several wafers in the same process or batch. Um, the cost per chip is around um, one euro, but the, the, the cost for one chip in itself without the antibodies could be down to two cents because it's an, essentially an electrical po component and it can, uh, the main cost is the antibodies right now. It has, our sensors have five wires, but the number of wires is arbitrary, um, which means we can have a general sweep mode. So we can surface functionalize each of the five wires with a different uh, antibody specific to a different biomarker. And let's take, for instance, five of the most pre prevalent diseases in a public population. Then we can make a very fast sweep of the general health. We can also have a specific mode where we take one disease and uh, use several of the biomarkers for one disease, enabling us to reduce the amount of pa false positives. So, you might ask, why a silicon nanowire biofed? It's because it's a novel technology. There are no other nanowire or biosensors using this technology right now. It's scalable, which makes it very cheap, down to one euro per chip. It's very high sensitivity. Um, we have, studies have shown its, sensi its sensitivity down to um, the presence of a single molecule. It's very fast. Um, the change in the resistivity is instant. And uh, having multiple wires enabling us to, uh, yeah, 
to make a specific and public sweep mode. So, are there questions? Yes? Uh, what was the hardest part in, in the process of making your biosensor? Um, the hardest part, I guess you could make it into two parts. The fabrication is very uh, hard, but uh, we, have, we, have made, um, we have made a protocol for the fabrication now. It just needs to be tweaked uh, to optimize it. Another hard part is to surface functionalize and uh, be sure that, that your surface functionalized antibodies are situated where they are supposed to be and that they are hard enough bound to the nanowire. Um, you want to make different wires with different antibodies. Um, do you make the wires first before implanting them in a chip, or do you make the wires and then add the antibodies to the wires? Um, when fabricating this chip, we fabricate the chip first with the nanowires, and uh, then we functionalize them afterwards. Uh, that was your question? All right. Yes? Um, how do you manage to get antibodies to specific wires so that on each wire there is a different antibody? There are different methods of uh, applying antibodies to different wires, so you don't uh, have surface functionalized everything. One method you could do is to, because there is a microfluidic system um, integrated in the surface passivation, uh, you could drop um, a solution with your antibodies down to the to the to the sensor because you know how fast it would go through the microfluidics, and then you could segregate it with a drop of oil to for us, for the for the solutions to, to not mix, and then you could flow, for instance, a current through the specific nanowire at a specific time to enable only that wire to be functionalized. Any more questions? Thank you once again, Nikolai. <laughs> <laughs>